Today we are making a video on Sparky Linux 6.7. It's a KDE desktop environment and a 64-bit ISO file. Here is the boot menu of a Sparky Linux. So these are all the options available in the boot menu. There are more languages here. If you want to choose your language, you can choose it here. So let's quickly boot it in a live mode. So I'm running it as a virtualization in a VMware with 80 GB of hard disk, 4 GB of RAM and the two processors. So it's going to take uh, one minute a maximum to load up the desktop layout or minimum like uh, 30 to 40 seconds because that's the usual timing of every Linux distro uh, which we we'll, uh, usually take to load up the desktop layout. And uh, again one more thing I forgot to mention that is that I will be posting two videos daily without missing any day. I am doing that from uh, almost like a six years for almost six years or five years like that. So I already posted a video in the YouTube. Uh, if you want to check that out you can check that out after watching this content there is already a uh, content available so if you want to subscribe you can subscribe it's almost like uh, 18 to 20 seconds and uh, as you can see we, our logo has uh, completed loading so still few more seconds and we should be seeing our desktop layout and here is a mouse pointer and you should be seeing a mouse pointer with a highlighter because i set it up in my screen recordings like that so it's a KDE desktop environment so it, sh it should take like a, a few more seconds more because uh, it's uh, not a lightweight desktop environment you already know the lightweight desktop environments are the LXQT, LXDE and the XFCE so some of like open box also sometimes so still few more seconds and uh, we should be having our desktop layout completely loaded this is the latest version it is released like uh, yesterday or uh, like a few hours back so here is our welcome screen Sparky Linux 6 Portolo so let me close this thing and uh, change the display resolution and there you can see a glitch so let's quickly change the uh, display setting let's go to the application menu and find the uh, system settings It is taking a lot of time to uh, load up uh, even uh, small things that's usual in the uh, KDE Plasma. My monitor is 1920 into 1080 but uh, it's not available here. You can type that uh, in a command uh, to change the resolution but I don't want to do that. Let me quickly uh, choose the 1360 into 768 even though my monitor is like a 1920 into 1080. As you can see it didn't change because the if there is an old version of a KDE Plasma it never worked to, uh, for me it always uh, uh, doesn't allow me to change the resolution so I'm going to keep the uh, normal resolution like this uh, which should be like a 1860 or a 640 like that so let's complete the video like this only so as you can see it's a older version KDE Plasma the latest version is like a 5.27.5 or 6 like that and here is like a 5.20.5 and the KDE framework version is also the older version the latest version is like a 5.105 and the QT version is here and the kernel version the latest kernel version was released like a, a 10 days back which is a 6.3 and the version we get is a 5.10 and it's a 64-bit architecture so it's clearly up to you to choose this Linux distro or not because everything is a older version uh, only if you want to uh, use this you can use it it's clearly up to you i'm not going to recommend this linux distro because you need to always uh, get the latest uh, version of the softwares and some of the applications like that because it's a good thing to download the latest version uh, and running the latest version will be safe so this is the website if you want to go to the website you can click on it so i'm going to do that later so let first uh, check the system monitor because we need to know how much of uh, resources are consuming uh, before running uh, any applications so these are all the processes running right now let me quickly uh, drag it so these are all the processes as you can see and the system load CPU and the CPU1, CPU2 this is the RAM it's almost like a 640 MB I'm using a 4GB of RAM which I already mentioned and it's already consuming like a 640 MB 
on the ram side and the cpu side it's uh, pretty good uh, but you have the older version so that's will be uh, that will be a problem for you so if it doesn't bother you you can use this linux distro so i'm, I'm not going to recommend this linux distro because uh, there uh, there are a lot, a lot of old uh, uh, versions in it so you can't even properly change the display resolution and there is no uh, 1920 into 1080 resolution a lot of uh, linux distros have but uh, i don't know why they don't have so these are all the resources consuming right now i'm going to open the resource uh, system monitor again at the end of the video and there is a lot of glitch going on in the linux distro i don't know why it is going on so let's quickly open the console which is the terminal in the kiri desktop environment let me check the version of the console which is 20.12.3 let's type in few commands and again you can see there is a bit of a glitch here let's type in the command which is inxi-sv8 this is the command which will grab complete distro info but it didn't open it says command not found so let's try the neofetch neofetch is also not allowable let's type in the uname-a which will show you the kernel we already saw the kernel version so no need to show that let's type in hstop hstop is also uh, not available so there is a lot of glitch going on i don't know the problem i think instead of uh, downloading this uh, 6.7 version it's better to go with the 7 version so these are all the wallpapers available there is not uh, much of wallpapers some of them are uh, like uh, from the debian wallpapers so the folder view should be 3.0 because it's always a 3.0 so these are all the desktop features which are calendar notification and status internet connection disks and drives volume you can set the volume here clipboard so these are all the other options so there is nothing more than that so let me uh, go to their official website and i'm going to show you how to download the uh, Sparky Linux 6.7 from their official website. So the Firefox web browser is the default uh, web browser for almost every Linux distro. You already know uh, Firefox will be used in a lot of Linux distros. Uh, and uh, after the downloading process, I'm going to show you the installer also. So this is the website. <laughs> sparkylinux.arch is the website or you can directly type in sparkylinux in the search engine or the search bar it will take you directly to their website so sparkylinux 6.7 so let's quickly go to the uh, download and if you don't have an ad blocker you, you're going to be having a lot of ads and uh, here you can choose the stable and the semi rolling it's a 6.6 .6. but in the distro watch it has the uh, 6.7 release so you can download uh, right from there if you want or you can directly go to the news i think they released in the news i guess so let's check the spark linux news and find out the i don't think here it is but let's go to the distro watch and uh, download the spark linux from there let's type in the distro watch as a search term click on enter here is the first link which is distrowatch.com and here is the Spark Linux. So it's available in the Source Forge. If you want, you can download it right from here, or you can direct uh, type the uh, Source Forge as the search term and click on it and type in here the Spark Linux. And this is the uh, file folder. Or the link so you can directly uh, type in this complete URL because it's a lot of uh, 
its lengthy URL, it's better to go to the SourceForge and download it there. So the desktop environments available is only KDE Plasma and the base version and the ARM one. So you can directly click and download here or you can go to the KDE version and download from there. So here is the ISO file. It's almost like a 2 GB of file size. So it's a lot of uh, glitchy here. So it's going to take like a 5 seconds. You can go and download like this or directly from the source code. It's completely, uh, it's up to you. So I'm using a VPN so it will be a, a bit of slow here. So it's almost a 1.8 GB of file size. So that's the downloading process and that's the website. So let's go to the installer now. Let's quickly launch the installer. So here is the installer. Let's check about the installer. It's a Calamaras 3.2.41.1 for Spark Linux 6 Potolo. So again, this is the same installation style or the installation method for every Linux distro. If you have a Calamaras installer, that will be a same installation style. So first you need to choose your language. I'm choosing the American English. Click on next. And next you need to choose your location. You don't need to provide your actual location. You can provide anything you want. I'm, or you can use this drop down menu or you can directly click on the map. I'm choosing Los Angeles, America. You can even customize some of the things here. Like a system language, all the things here. Click on next. You need to choose your keyboard model. It automatically gives you a keyboard model. But if you don't, you can uh, check here or you can type here to test it. I'm choosing English to United States and the default for my keyboard model. Click on next and you need to be careful while choosing the partitions because uh, you need to first choose the hard disk here. If you have a multiple hard disk, you can choose the uh, uh, whatever hard disk you want here. Hard disk, SSD, whatever the installation destination, you can choose it here. If you choose the RS disk, it's going to delete the current operating system, delete everything which is uh, available in the hard disk, SSD, whatever it is. It's going to completely wipe off uh, everything. And it's going to install the uh, Spark Linux 6.7 in that uh, uh, hard disk or SSD. And this option is the manual partitioning. It will allow you to uh, choose the partition, whatever partition you pro uh, created. Uh, it's a, it will be an option like a dual boot or the dual boot operating systems. So that's the difference between here. I'm choosing the RS disk for the sake of the video. I'm not going to install it on my virtual machine because I don't want to. So this is the options. If you want, you can choose any option here. If you want to encrypt, you can encrypt by providing the two passwords in the two boxes, which should be same. After, uh, if you want encrypted, you can encrypt. Uh, if you don't want, it's clearly up to you. And the bootloader location, uh, if you want, you can choose the default one or you can do that later. It's clearly up to you to customize anything you want. So after choosing everything, click on next. You need to provide your username and password. You don't need to provide your username and password, uh, actual username, you need to provide the password. You can provide the any username you want. If everything is going good, you should be seeing a tick mark or, uh, beside the box. For the sake of the video, I'm just choosing the simple password. Always give the strong password because for the privacy thing. So here is the password. If you want to use the same password for the administrator account, you can click on it. Uh, check this button if you don't want you can provide the other password and always write down the password if you forget it it will be helpful so after choosing everything click on next and here is the summary of what you choose in the previous steps of the installation so i choose all this option and these are all the things will happen after clicking on install after clicking on install it's going to take like a maximum of uh, 20 minutes or minimum of uh, 5 to 10 minutes because it's completely depends on your system and uh, on the Linux distro. So after that installation, it will be asking like to finish and reboot your system and you should be having your Spark Linux 6.7. Uh, whatever you choose, uh, RS disk or the manual partitioning, dual boot or single boot, whatever you uh, choose it, it will be installed like that. So that's the installation process. So let me close the installation. There's a lot of glitch going on continuously. So I think we covered everything. So let's just uh, check the 
uh, pre-installed apps and end the video because there is nothing more than that on the development we have icon browser on the graphics when view library office ocular scan scan light on the internet we have a lot of apps like a thunderbird firefox multimedia vlc elisa office library office ocular science settings system utilities help and power of options so let uh, let's quickly open some of the apps like just the important apps not every app because it's going to take a lot of time so let's open the ocular on the internet we saw the firefox web browser uh, version so we don't need to show that we just need a thunderbird library office on the multimedia we need a vlc media player and elisa so let's open elisa and i think uh, that's it i guess so let's open even the uh, snaptic package manager and let's check out the uh, version of the every app we opened so let's close it and check the library office version it's a 7.0.4.2 the latest version is like a 7.5.2.2 that's the latest version of library office and the version will be same for every uh, library office application which is like a impress calculator draw every version will be same there will be nothing difference there so thunderbird version is here so let's close it even and the elisa 20.12.3 let's close it and uh, vlc media player should be like a 3.10 i guess it's a 3.0.18 so let's even close this thing and uh, ocular it's a 20.12.3 and the gwen view it's a 20.12.3 there's a lot of glitch going on uh, in the Linux distro. You should be seeing in the uh, recording also, I guess. And uh, we covered everything, so no need to show that. So just uh, open the Snaptic package manager. I'm going to show some of the. So let's let me quickly scroll it. The installed version will be highlighted like a green and the version will be here. So let me quickly scroll it down. So these are all the installed uh, packages. Let's check out the package manager version 0.90.2. The latest version will be like a 0.91.3 or something like that. I properly don't remember that. And as you can see, it's clearly up to you to use this Linux distro or not. Uh, if you ask me, I'm not going to recommend this because it's a, a lot of glitchy and it has the older versions of the some of the apps. So. I don't recommend you there is other Linux distros uh, which will keep you uh, always up to date so always go with that type of Linux distros I already made like a tons of videos in the my channel so if you want to check that out you can check it out I think we covered everything I guess so let's check out the uh, system monitor and end the video so these are all the process running right now as you can see and the system load cpu is uh, around like uh, 15 to 20 percent under 20 to 15 percent and the ram is almost like a 770 mb so the ram and the cpu is pretty good but you have a older version so you need to keep that in mind and it's clearly up to you to judge it or not to use this linux distro or not so that's the end of the video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit the thumbs up button it helps make a good content for you other than that i'll see you in tomorrow's video peace out i already made it another content so if you want to check that out you can check that out because i'll be posting two videos daily again thanks for watching